Well, hello, welcome back to the channel. Um, come somewhere just a little bit different this week because I had to come a uh, quite a long way far north for work. So uh, we're at Culloden Battlefield. Uh, we're going to try and get a few pictures here and then I'll grab another shot. Oh, I've suddenly gone all bad. I'll grab another shot um, on the way back down later on because there's somewhere else I have in mind as well which has actually got something else to do with the Jacobites so we may as well just start bang on here just exactly where we are because here we have this little cottage here right behind me I'm in darkness you see that right we'll try and grab a shot of that so that's it I'm all set up um, pointing at this old cottage um, can't remember the name of it, Le Leach or something like that. Um, and it was during the Battle of Culloden. It's one of the few buildings around here, probably the only building around here that was actually here at the time of the battle. So um, I'm going to try and grab a shot of it. Uh, what I should actually add, obviously, is if you do enjoy uh, the photography on this channel, it'd be great if you could uh, like, subscribe, click on the little bell icon down in the corner there um, and leave any comments would be fantastic okay anyway on with this what we're going to do is we're going to shoot it in um, HDR we're going to bracket it uh, reason being because the front of the front of the cottage if I just stick on the movie here the front of the cottage as you can see is all in darkness uh, so just to try and get the the maximum amount of um, dynamic range out of this we're going to bracket it uh, the other thing I'm going to do is the same trick I did a couple of weeks ago remember when I was up at uh, Cairn Papel and I stuck my finger in front of the sun like that just to try and stop any any flare from happening so we'll do that again what I didn't mention on that particular shoot is the need to it should be fairly obvious you've got to have the camera in fully manual mode which is what I've got here otherwise you'll end up doing that and the camera will focus on your finger or your exposure time if you're in kind of aperture priority or something your exposure time will go down any kind of nonsense like that so to make sure your two shots are the same before you blend them in photoshop um you make sure that they are that your camera is in manual mode so that's what i've got here uh sitting at f22 1 25th of a second um i have sat on my um Oh, what do you call it, the graph thing? Can't remember. Uh, it's sat on that, make sure that it's not exposing beyond the far end. But that's not too big an issue because we're bracketing, it should take it down. So, 1 25th of a second is what we're looking at. And of course, right now, the sun has disappeared behind a cloud because that's just, you know, waiting for me to take a picture while I yaffle. Right, so what we'll do, I could probably just actually grab the shot like this for now. Maybe I don't need to put my finger in front of the picture. Let's just see it. I'll hang around for a bit. We'll see if the sun comes back out again and I'll do that. But in the meantime, I'll switch that off. I've already focused up, okay? Uh, I'm taking this at, I've actually got it set to five shots for bracketing. It's probably overkill, but you know, better too many than not enough. Okay, so we've got all the trees are in shadow, the cottage in shadow, but time we overexpose on them and whatnot, should be fine. The sun, I don't think, is going to come back out again. There's quite a big blank bank of cloud. Just suddenly appeared out of nowhere while I've been talking. But not to worry. We'll grab this shot anyway. Probably without doing the finger thing. Okay, right. So, that's it. Stop talking, Douglas, and get a move on. Grab the shot. I'm focused. I've got everything set. Like I say, 1, 1 25th of a second, F22. And go. 1, 2, 3, click. Actually, a fairly common misconception that uh, the Battle of Culloden was fought between the Scots and the English. It wasn't. There were Scots and English on both sides. It was a battle between 
the Jacobites who wanted uh, King James the something or other, James VIII, back on the throne. And uh, the government forces who were trying to keep uh, the, the line of succession, the Protestant line. Uh, so basically, good old fashioned Catholics versus Protestants was uh, what the fight was. So, um, yeah, Scots and English from both sides, and they've got stones around here commemorating all the clans that actually fought and died on both sides. Uh, I'm walking down just now a, a path that goes along the lines of the government forces. Do you see the um, see these red flags behind me? There. This shows the, the government line. So I'm just going to walk down here and just see where it takes me. So I have actually, unlike last week's one, mind when I was up, um, that a uh, Bing just sort of five miles from where I live and I'd never been up there before. Well, this is Culloden Moor, which is about 120 miles or so from where I live. And I have been up here before. I was here a couple of years back. And I've um, actually popped back again this afternoon just to have a recce and decide where I was going to take the shots today. So, uh, probably a bit more prepared than I was uh, last week. But uh, unfortunately, the thing we call it Moor, let's see if I swing around behind me here, it's quite flat and uh, it's just all this kind of heather scrub that they've got and I don't know what the bushes are that are across it, there's a lot of them. The National Trust for Scotland are trying to um, make it look the way that it was at the time of the battle because uh, from the 19th century the whole thing was planted with commercial forestry right through until 1983 I believe um, by which time all the um, all the, the, the archaeology from underneath was all just disrupted completely by tree roots and stuff like that. So they don't know as much about the battle as they would like, I don't think, because of that, because they can't do any decent archaeology. No. So that's me all set up for another shot now. Um, we've moved right across the Jacobite lines. Uh, we're actually beside the main road here, so apologies if it's a wee bit noisy. But, uh, yeah, so... There's blue flags up here which represent the Jacobite lines, just like there was red flags over that way representing the government lines. Um, so, uh, I've lined up, I want to get uh, a few of these flags in a row. So, if I just stick on the movie here, I've got my long lens on, um, pointing directly at these flags. There's not really a great deal of wind, it'd be nice if there was some more wind and they were blowing about a bit but they're not, so uh, we'll just have to take them as they are. Now this, I suspect, is going to have to be a 16 by 9 I've got my lens extended right out to 200 mils here. Um, I really need to be closer for this shot, but there's no way we're going to get closer without walking across the moorland here and causing damage that you're not allowed to do and probably tripping over something and injuring myself in the process as well. So we're not going to do that. Um, I'm focused on the flags themselves. I'm sitting at f6.3 which has given me one one hundred and sixtieth of a second. I'm in aperture priority because uh, I'm not really that bothered about the um, exposure length. There's, like I say, there's not a great deal of movement, so I may as well let the camera decide for itself. Uh, yeah, so looking at the flags, uh, we've got them sitting directly on the rule of thirds, these two here. Here's my fingers gone. Can't see, I think it's because they need to be further back. Let's just take it as red. I've got the flag sitting on the rule of thirds and I've got the third flag way across here. Ugh. Yeah, sitting halfway across the, um, the rule of thirds on the far uh, left-hand side here. So there are a couple of people walking through the shot here, but I'll wait until they're gone. Uh, and then I shall grab the shot. Okay, so, uh, yeah. I'll just count it in and then you'll see the picture. Oh, they're going, they're going, they're going. I'll switch that off. And here we go. Uh, focus on the flags. And here we go. One, two, three, click.
So I've got an idea here for a shot. We're looking across um, to the memorial cairn just across here and uh, there's some flowers in the foreground here. I don't want just the, the usual snapshot of the cairn with the, uh, you know, just close up with uh, nothing in the foreground. So what I'm going to try for is these flowers. There's some daisies here in the foreground with the cairn in the background. Now the sun has just come out and it's got lovely light so I'm going to get set up as quickly as possible and I'll get back to you in a second, okay? So I couldn't quite get the shot was after there, um, so I've taken the camera further up. I couldn't get the flowers and the cairn in the same shot at the same time with the cairn big enough and the flowers in focus or, or even blurred, even slightly blurred. It was just too much of a gap between the two, so I couldn't get the composition to work. So I've kind of changed it around just a wee bit um, and I brought the camera up higher, uh, I've got the cairn, if I just stick on the movie here you'll see what I'm talking about. We've got the cairn sitting smack bang in the middle of the picture, lots of grass uh, at the bottom of the picture down here, um, and hopefully we've got a bit of wind moving around so hopefully that should help blur the grass a bit, give it a bit of movement, a bit of kind of life to the picture. Okay, uh, the sun is out now finally so we're getting some nice light on it as well. Uh, so yeah I'm taking it right down to f6.3 so again we get the depth of field that we're after. I'm focusing right on the, the cairn in the distance there. So again, we're getting the trees in the background kind of out of focus. We're getting all the grass in the foreground out of focus. Okay, uh, so I'll switch that movie off there. Right, I'll focus up again just to be absolutely certain that we're in focus. And I shall just grab the shot. One, two, three, click. So if you've seen Outlander, you'll know this particular stone very well because it was featured in, I think, series three of Outlander and it's usually got loads and loads of visitors, which I suspect is why they're building this path down here. So they've got a kind of green mesh thing, you'll have seen it in that bureau there, um, around the path, so presumably must still be building it and it's needing protection. But I was trying to get the stone with some context around it, you know, uh, with the long lens. But unfortunately, I'm going to have to push right in so you can actually read what's on uh, the stone uh, without getting all the green mesh in the way. So, uh, that's it. We're all focused up. I'll just stick the movie on for you so that you can see it like that. Uh, as I say, we're really as far in as we can go or as far out as we can go because if I pull it out, as you can see, that green mesh is there very much in the way. So, I'll just bring it in again, okay, like that, and I have got uh, the stone itself sitting on that rule of thirds, again, just sitting over on the left-hand side, and we've pulled it right in uh, to around about, what am I sitting at, 134 mils or so, is that 25 or 35? My lens is a wee bit worn, it has to be said. Uh, anyway, yeah, so we're in there fairly close in. We've got some of the some of the grass behind it, some of these kind of bushes and stuff in behind it as well. This kind of scrub is what we've got there. You'll have seen it when I pulled out there. But uh, yeah, so we've got the stone sitting there. I wonder if I can maybe just move it up a tad. Like that maybe. Just a wee bit. Okay, uh, again I've taken the uh, what do you call it, the, um, the aperture down to 5.6, f5.6, just purely in order to uh, focus on the stone and get the background out of focus. Okay, so I'll switch the movie off like that. I'll just make sure that I am actually, oh no, I'm not quite straight here in fact. Let me just straighten up because we can't have a squint stone, can we? There, okay. What we have to remember about this place 
each of these stones actually represents. I mean, it doesn't seem like it, but I am in, in, in I am in, Peter Teeth and Douglas, I'm in yet another graveyard. It seems to be a habit of mine that, that I'm sitting in graveyards. This one doesn't look like a graveyard, but it is. Underneath each of these stones, uh, what the government forces did was just dug a pit and chucked all the, sol the soldiers from each of the different clans in. We don't really know for certain if it's even the Cret clans. Uh, they just chucked a whole pile of bodies in and stuck a stone on top. Clan Fraser in this particular instance. A sign I saw back there somewhere. Um, I think I took some B-roll of it. I'll stick it on now. Uh, said that there were 400, I think, Frasers. I've got no idea how many survived. Um, but anyway, they all wound up under here. Okay, anyway, as I was saying, yes, I've got a uh, low depth of field, F5.6, as I could pull out as much as, as possible. Uh, we're just sitting, focusing directly on the stone, trying to get it focused on the writing itself. Okay, which is giving me one eightieth of a second. The sun is shining from over there, which is beautiful, so we've, we've got enough shadow and what contrast. Okay, so, uh, yeah, that's it. I shall just grab the shot. One, two, three, click. Okay, well, we're going to move on now. Uh, we're going to leave the battlefield here because there's another uh, Jacobite connected thing that I want to catch further down the road, further back towards home. Uh, so I'm going to rush off because I want to try and catch it at sunset. In the meantime, uh, I did take a picture of the cairn from just here as well, the memorial cairn. Uh, I know I said I wasn't going to, but I did. So I'll show you that just now and we'll head off down the road. Okie dokie. See you in a sec. Right, well, uh, we've made it to the Ruthven Barracks more or less just on time. Um, the sun has already set, but we're getting a... It's not a fantastic sunset, but it's an alright sunset. Um, now, the reason that I've come to the Ruthven Barracks is because this is where the Jacobite soldiers from Culloden wound up uh, a couple of days later. It's about 42 miles up the road to Culloden. But this was government barracks but the Jacobites arrived, all the ones that escaped from Culloden, I should say, that weren't caught up and killed and put in the, the holes by the government troops. They escaped to here, there was government troops holding this, and the Jacobites basically fought for it and caught it, took it. Um, got rid of all the, the government troops, don't know if they killed them or what, but anyway, they gathered here and they waited. And they waited and they waited. They were waiting for Bonnie Prince Charlie to come and he never, ever did. So, um, eventually a letter arrived which basically said, I can't remember the exact wording, but it said something along the lines of run for your lives, get out of here, I'm offski. Um, which he was, he was escaping, dressed as a woman, over the sea to sky. Uh, as we all know, that's how the story went. So, and the Jacobites here dispersed, ran fast as they could just to get away from the government troops that were pursuing. Some of them went to America, some of them went back to their ancestral homes, their clan lands and whatnot, you know. Government troops hunted them down, tried to kill them. Didn't get them all. Some went off to America, like I say. Anyway, that's that. This is where the story ended. So we're gonna, we're gonna grab the, the picture 
just while we can. So I shall put on the movie. I've got the camera right down low. Oh, let me just turn my aperture down like that so you can see it. Got the camera right down low so that the fence comes in at the side over here. Okay, now we've got all these leading lines. I mean, the fence obviously right at the very top of the picture. All these leading lines there, the path running right up to the barracks, and this one running right up to the barracks as well. I'm just going to turn it around just a tad to there so that we've got this path here running right up and through the, the rule of thirds, basically up to the barracks at the top, top of the hill. Okay. Uh, I haven't quite set this up properly because I did it in a hurry, but something like that ought to do it. And we're catching sunset behind them as well. Again, like that first shot that I took back at that wee cottage, I'm going to bracket this because uh, the, um, the the building is in um, in darkness and shadow silhouette. I don't, I don't want to silhouette, I want to see details. Okay, so that's that. I'll turn the movie off and I shall turn my aperture back up. I'm going to go for F11. Okay, that's given me a time of a quarter of a second. All right, I saw 100 again. Not much moving, just some of the grass in the foreground. We don't need to catch that. We're getting some lovely light coming over onto the uh, the hillside and whatnot. So let's just grab that now. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, click. wrap up at that um, it's been a busy kind of day for me busy evening uh, if you have enjoyed the video please let me know uh, please say so in comments down underneath also if you could please like please subscribe hit that little bell icon which is down in that corner down there somewhere yeah uh, which will let you see everything that I post uh, as soon as I post it uh, just remember I'm here every Sunday morning quarter past eight or so okay tune in be great to great to see you right and uh, yeah we'll call it a night at that bye for now cheers